When the United States President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, PEPFAR, decided to champion a unique public-private partnership to address prevention of HIV among young people in Kenya, corporations, consultants, governments, and NGOs joined forces to be part of this new and ambitious initiative, the Partnership for an HIV-Free Generation. They selected an informal settlement in southeast Nairobi for the launch, a place well suited to create a blueprint for a program that could be used across Kenya and Africa. The environment is so bad, it is so unhealthy for the people who are staying here. And this is the place where uh, we have several dumping taking place. HIV Free Generation is all about helping young people live healthy lives free of HIV. Take a walk through Mukuru and you find a community of 600,000 people with more than half under the age of 15. An estimated one in 10 people are already living with HIV. Okay, we are in Mkuru Kwajenga. Uh, it is an informal settlement where we have more than uh, 100,000 people living in this uh, part of uh, village. And this is the way. Ahead of us, we, we can see that there are uh, a bit of some informal uh, construction. Those are the toilet. Generally, people in Mkuru, um, they are earning, they are living out of this a small kind of business. They don't have uh, a proper job and this is the kind of activities that they are engaging themselves in at least to see if they are going to earn their living at the end of the day. Amidst all this, you will be greeted over and over again by the youth of Makuru who will share their dreams, drive and their desire to make a difference. You will discover grassroots and faith-based organizations mobilized to help and meet skilled community leaders and citizens serving as teachers, trainers, coaches and counselors in voluntary counseling and testing clinics. Uh, we have members of the community that do help us because for us to be able to work here, we need to work with the people within the community. Without them, you cannot do much. Public health researchers know that community members and leaders are the source for the quantitative and qualitative data necessary for success. It is crucial to connect with the local networks and the influencers who know what is needed most in their communities and how to make things happen. My siblings depend on me. At the moment I'm their breadwinner. I have to wake up early, search for work so that I can get at least something for them for their upkeep. Majority of the youths have been turning to mugging people so that they can survive. Target school kids, those in standard 7 and 8. For girls, in fact, we face uh, a big challenge. Because like girls, uh, especially if a girl hasn't gone through education, she, she won't be able to know how to take life, as in how to go through challenges in life. Many of the youth in this community, when they are idle, they end up engaging themselves in activities like drugs, nobody, and also sexual activity that lead to HIV AIDS. But when we give them, empower them by giving them skills and where possible, financial support, then we are going to occupy their minds and they'll be able in turn also to support their families and we can break the cycle of poverty. To capture this rich community wisdom, an innovative tool called community asset mapping was introduced. Its premise, you can't build a successful HIV prevention program on what people don't have. You can only build on the personal and collective assets already in place. The good news is that every community, no matter how poor, has significant assets, many of them already at work, but hidden from view. Traditional inventories of community assets may only skim the surface in developing countries like Kenya. Listening to the community members can identify three or even four times as many potential partners for addressing public health challenges. Community health asset mapping shines light on those resources that people most trust 
value, and feel ownership for, and are therefore most likely to use. Workshops brought community members together to enhance existing networks and map existing assets in Mukuru. Before this community asset mapping, the experts estimated that 50 community health assets existed in all of Mukuru. After the five workshops brought together over 150 community members to map the assets themselves, 200 sites were identified in just two of the 14 villages that make up Mukuru. The community understands that HIV is not just a health issue, it is a social, economic and political issue. The increase of HIV AIDS in Mukuru uh, is increasing day and night because of, uh, due to lack of jobs, lack of proper housing and lack of uh, even water projects. They have the will and the plans for change. What they need is partnership and investment. Don't stress the progress. We need the help of uh, companies like Coca-Cola, like Nike, like many others, Microsoft as well, to join this initiative and they have joined this initiative to bring their core competencies, their skills. We need those business models as well in the fight against HIV AIDS. Getting the support of key community leaders and spreading the message takes time. But the effects of the participatory approach begin immediately and are visible and measurable throughout. The ball is already in motion. Currently with Warner Brothers developing the video game. This video game will go into the computer centers. The youth, they'll learn about computers, they'll develop their computer skills. This will give them an edge in the market. They'll be inspired to learn more, to do more. They'll, they'll feel like people are investing in them. I, for example, am one of the beneficiaries who have gone and uh, come back to see and to encourage my brothers and sisters. Neatly uniformed students sponsored by Makata Safaris meet to complete their homework, while a women's micro-enterprise group does bead work in the Makata Center nearby. Mwechi stands for Mukuru Women Empowerment and Community Health Initiative, and I've been helping those who are positive in the community, working hand in hand with Makata Safaris. For now, we are supporting more than 500 members. Each family consisting of seven or five members, we do the home visit twice in a week. And on Friday, we meet as a group to get the feedback from different areas of Mukuru. We also do the, uh, the feeding program. The food that we get, we get from uh, our bead work. Whatever we make in bead work, Mikato Safaris do the shipping, they sell for us, and then send the funds in our bank account in Commercial Bank. When we finish what we have started in Mukuru, we will have built a blueprint with the flexibility to work anywhere in Kenya or globally because it is based on the simple idea of building the right partnerships and engaging influences in the community to engage a community at large. Okay, I'm proud because like, I'm from Mukuru and right now, as I can see, I have a future.